evening. First of all, welcome to the Art Science Museum. It's such an iconic place for me to share about this topic today. What, how, IoT, you probably don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. But how IoT will turn all, uh, turn all of us into superheroes. Let me start with a story. That's a story of Mrs. Huang. Mrs. Huang is retired. She's living in Europe. She's, a, she's a, obviously Chinese. She has been, immig she, she immigrated to, to, to Europe 35 years ago, and uh, she still cannot speak very good French or English, still, still staying in her Chinese community. Unfortunately, Mrs. Huang has very high blood pressure, she has high cholesterol, and her only son is living very, very far from her. But luckily, her son is a geek. So he basically installed a lot of sensors in her mom's, uh, his mom's home. There was fall detection system, there are emergency button, so that any time, if, if her mom needs anything, everything will be connected to the phone of his son, her son, and she, she, can connect, she can contact him. Well, that's Mrs. Huang. That picture was taken 35 years ago. And you see, the little baby here, which looked like a superhero, dressed like a, a kind of uh, Iron Man or Flash uh, suit, that's me. And I think that even if my family was not rich, we, I couldn't become Batman, didn't have a superpower. I couldn't, I couldn't run fast enough to become, to become Flash. But my mom always gave me this hope to be able to do more than, than just what I was. As an immigrant family, I had the chance, really, to grow up in, in, in France with a lot of friends who were also geek, and we discovered something when I was around 15 years old. You, do you remember that? That's a dial-up modem. You know the thing which is uh, doing tee, nom, 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 <laughs> And that thing was connecting us to the internet. The internet changed completely how we were learning things, how we were communicating with each other. It changed how we were working. And man created the cloud. This high authority, above all, which had gathered all the knowledge of human being. Any books, any medias, any, even your personal pictures. Everything was collected there without any ownership, without any location, that was a cloud. But technologists, tech companies, were still not satisfied. And some of them decided to do something more. They created the, the cloud in the sky, in this digital world, but they wanted to create this digital world. So what are they doing? They invented a new thing called the Internet of things. So what is the Internet of things? This is a new type of Internet. Let's take the golden cycle from Simon Sinek again. This why, how, what. I'm going to, to take it the other way around. So what is the Internet of things? I always use this example to, uh, to taxi drivers. When I, you know, I try to challenge myself trying to explain this to a taxi driver. I have one minute to tell him what I'm doing in life. Anyway, if you can do it in one minute, I can tell you, it's, uh, you can do it everywhere. So let's, I'd always say, hey, uh, uncle, uh, we, use, we call it uncle in Singapore, so uncle, have you realized that for the past five years, everything around you is becoming smart? The phone becomes a smartphone, uh, the, 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 the house became a smart home, the, the TV became a smart TV. It was cool to be, to be smart. Everything was going smart, 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 smart. It, it has been taken at, a, an, at another level. Today, you can even see people call, speaking about smart city. And, and Singapore was a, really one of the first countries in the world saying that we want to be the first smart nation. What does it mean? 
basically, making something smart is to connect it to the internet and to, to, to deploy sensors, data, you know, to, to deploy a lot of, of tracking solution or, or metering system so that a lot of data can be collected and sent to this digital world. That's a what. Now how? I remember Vivian Balakrishnan, the minister in charge of Smart Nation in Singapore, who was always speaking about smart citizen. What is a smart citizen? Well, you have two options to understand it. Whether you think that we are going to integrate some sensors uh, in, in your skin and then you will be like a cyborg and some people are speaking about exoskeleton which will make you stronger or, or some contact lens which will make you able to see kilometers away. Uh, that's a bit scary for me. It's good for military people. I think that it's fine also for, for handicapped people. But there's another meaning into it. Being a smart citizen means that we need to embrace smart initiatives. And what does it mean? Well, a lot of companies, a lot of big thinkers are saying that it's not a question of technology. It's really a question of mindset. And I would really want to, I would like to highlight this point to everyone. Remember when we used to, uh, to, 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 to go to the library to, to do some research? That was 20 years back. But with internet coming in, you could learn things much faster. 10 hours on a subject, you are able to speak about it. 100 hours on a subject, you can basically teach it. 1,000 hours on a subject, well, you're an expert. So if that was possible with the internet, which was basically the gathering of existing data, of existing knowledge of human beings, what if we were putting sensors and tracking solution and meter solution to collect data from everything around us to digitalize the world? That's basically the metrics. Remember Neo seeing the whole world with digits? That's exactly, if, even if it was a fiction 10, 20 years ago, that's exactly what today governments and corporations and tech companies are trying to do. Now the question is to say, why? Why do we want to digitalize all these things? Why do, you want to, do we want to collect more data? Sometimes people think that it's scary. Uh, we'll speak about like, uh, who will own this data, whatever, it's, it's dangerous, cybersecurity. Today I just want to focus on the very positive part of it. Data is today becoming a new superpower. Let me give you an example so that you can feel that, that data is important. I think that all of us probably, I mean, if, you, if you're not, uh, you didn't do it, you're, you're lucky, all of us have lost a laptop or a mobile phone. So the last time that you lost it, what were you thinking about? Were you thinking about the $600 that you paid for your phone? No. The most important thing was the pictures that you had inside, the contacts that you had inside, and all the chat history that you had with your ex-boyfriend uh, uh, or, no, or, or girlfriends. That's, that's natural. Now, take this example and expand it. Expand the importance of data into a whole company. A whole company or even more, a whole city, a whole country, for the whole humanity. All this data is really, really important. And you can, we are living today, we are entering today into a new era a new era where there's a clear, unprecedented shift of power. From before, when people were building their whole economy and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and, and strategy based, based on, on resources, on natural resources, today, people are going into data. What can we do with that? Well, with data, impossible things become possible. I, I love to take this example of Richard Tourere. Richard Tourere was, was, was a 13 year, uh, he, he's also, he's, he, he also gave a, a TED talk, and he, at 13 years old, he, uh, Tourere was born in a, in, in a small village yeah, in Kenya, realized that he had the, his, his, his family and, uh, and his friends had problems with lions who were threatening 
the, the, the future of, of a village. And because he had access to some knowledge, Turere had the, had the chance to, to, to go buy, get some technology knowledge, and build up a blinking system with LED connected to a car battery system which was powered by a solar panel. Wow. He became a hero for his village. And by becoming a hero of his village, they even take the technology and just deploy it in the whole of Kenya to protect themselves from, from animals. What I want to tell you is that this kind of use case can be multiplied now because knowledge and data are shared and it's open access to everybody. It's so simple to get access to data that a lot of people can find themselves a higher sense of purpose. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when we were in the industrial era, people were going to find a job. But Mark Zuckerberg remembered to everyone during the commencements of Harvard Business School recently that we are entering an era where every human being, wherever he's born, wherever, whoever his family is, can find himself a higher sense of purpose. Why is it so important to all of us? Look today at the top 15 companies in the world by market capitalization. You realize that five of them, I don't need to name it, are based on internet data. How many of us will come in the next 10, 20 years? And why are the other industries today build, are building up and preparing themselves into the digital transformation? Why? I'll try to explain you why with this iceberg. It's very simple. That's what Idris Abakan, a French TED Talk speaker, quite famous one, and I really recommend you to go listen to his speech, described as the economy of knowledge. The economy of knowledge is very different from the economy of the traditional economy because it's based on something which is infinite. If you base your whole economy and your, your, your growth and your, your, even your individual objective into something which is finite, limited, then you have a maximum to reach. But if you base your, your growth, your strategy, your business plan, or even your personal development into something which is infinite, then you can grow even higher every day. And that's the beauty, that's the beauty of what data can give today. Data is becoming more important than anything else. Data is a new superpower. So let me tell you now what we can do with, with data. I'm going to give you a few use cases, starting from the elderly care. So um, with elderly care, I was speaking about my parents before, we can, we can with a few sensors and some wearables, track the, 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 good, the, the good situation, the good condition of, of, of our loved one. But what about the kids? Today we are very, very, we are very lucky to be in Singapore, but in how many countries are kids getting kidnapped? It's so important, it's so important for, for parents to, to know where the kids are if they are getting late to come back home. A simple tracking solution put on the bed today can, 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 can do the job. People are getting worried about the stress or the sleeping pattern of, of, of the kids. But today, with some wearables, we can easily get, uh, get monitoring system for, for the kids. And on all the wearables today are, are getting more and more sophisticated. They are getting enough data from, from, from human beings which will, which will prevent us to get sick. They will tell you that your temperature is raising. They will tell you that your, your, your heartbeat is, is getting faster. All these things are symptoms that Internet of Things can detect. It doesn't only work on human beings. It's also work on animals. Start with pets. People are doing tracking solutions for pets. It goes to the livestock, 
people are doing that in Australia and, uh, and in Europe in order to, to, to track the, the, the health of, 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 of their livestock in, the, in, in farms. And it can even go to a higher purpose. In Africa, people are, de are deploying sensors on rhinoceros, on rhinoceros in order to, to, to protect the endangered species against all the poachers. That sounds like superhero thing. Indonesia, Latin America has a lot of forest. They have a lot of problems with fire. Recently, thousands of, of, of sensors have been deployed in order to detect all the smokes and to be able to prevent the fires or to, to react faster. In Antarctica, people are deploying sensors today in order to be able to give a figures on what everyone is calling the ice melting and the, the, the climate change. So that's why IoT is now so important. And collecting data, being able to put a figure on all these things happening around us becomes critical. So today, what I want you guys to remember is that there's a lot of hope in IoT. There's a lot of hope in all this data that we collect. It really opened us to unlimited resource of opportunities. Opportunities that, as an individual, we can use in order to find a, a, a better, better purpose in life, but also resources that companies can use, corporate can use, to define themselves new market, new strategies. If you embrace today IoT with, with me, I can tell you that you will, you will get three benefits straight away. The first one is that you will help the world to understand the planet better. And that's extremely important to control the environment in order to prevent from disasters and so on. Two, it's going to help us to prevent more disease. It's going to help us to understand where all the sickness comes from. And that's why all the projects on the genome things, of the genome data has been launched all around the world. And three, at last but not least, I think that the most important, uh, the most important commodity that we were all born equally with and that we all want. The main reason why we try to optimize the process and try to take faster decision is to give us more time. And time is something that everybody wants. Look at this picture. You remember the matrix thing in green? Well, if we can't all become superheroes for the whole planet, IoT will allow us to become superheroes for the close one and our family. Thank you very much.